Welcome to Naresh IT. This is Kishore and today we are going to discuss about uh, history and uh, the new features which are implemented in C++. Okay. First of all, I am going to start the history of C++. That means, who invented, in which year it is invented and what is the first name of C++. Today, we are going to discuss about all these concepts. Now, first of all, the C++, C++ language is introduced by there is a software engineer called uh, Bajen Strostrup in early 80s that means actually in 1982 okay and Strostrup is working as a software engineer in AT&T Bell Labs and he here he designed a software called C++ and one more thing here the C++ initial name is the C++ initial name is C with the classes and why it is called C with the classes. Okay. Here I am going to give this, say this. C++ other is Bajen Strostrup. Okay. C++ is introduced by the person Bajen Strostrup and uh, Strostrup is working as a, a software engineer. Strostrup is working as a software engineer and he launched this software in 1982. Actually, Strostrup is very much interested, Strostrup is very much interested on C language. Why? Because already C is a familiar because of its powerful features. Okay? Actually, it is introduced in 1982. Before that, C is very popular because of its powerful features. What are the powerful features in C language? That is, first thing is C is a multi-purpose programming language and it is a portable language, it is a function oriented language and dynamic memory allocation, mid-level language, simple. Okay. Due to some of the causes, C language becomes very popular, but uh, only the problem in C language is what? the data is not secured because of data is public. That is why Strostrup want to make the C language more powerful. That is why he done one thing. He added the new concept of classes to the traditional C language. Okay? Here the important thing is actually C++ is the extension of C language. That means, it is nothing but C, but uh, with only one new feature called class. That is why he done only one thing that is he added the concept of class from another language called Simula 67. Okay? There is a language called Simula 67 and there we are using class concept and that class concept is added to the traditional C language and uh, the new name is given to this one C with classes. Okay? Now, the new name given to this language is C with classes because of it is nothing but C with the new concept of classes. That is why the initial name of C++ is C with classes. Now, everybody is calling with the different names because of he said he is not it is nothing but C. That is why several persons are going to call with uh, several names like uh, super set of C, extension of C, increment of C, advanced version of C like this. To avoid this problem, to avoid this problem, now the ANSI recognized with a new name called uh, C++. To avoid this uh, naming confusion, ANSI given the new name called C++ in 1983. And here interesting thing is, in C language, plus plus indicates uh, increment operator. In C language, we are calling plus plus means increment. And how much incremented? Only one. Now, indirectly the meaning is C with one increment. That one increment is nothing but a class. That means, both are looking to be same, but the name is C with the classes here, here C plus plus. And nowadays, it is very familiar with the name CPP. Okay. According to this example, C++ is the extension of C. That means, all the operators, data types, 
which are supported with the C language, they are also supported in C++. That is why all the C functions, operators, data types are nothing but C++ okay, operators, data types and nothing but data types. Now, here one important point is there that is here we are going to discuss about C++ newly introduced data types. That means, just before we have discussed C++ is the extension of C. That is why all the data types are working in C++. Along with these data types in C++ they have introduced some new data types. Now, what are the new data types introduced in C++? Okay. In general in C language we are going to use primitive data types, derived data types and user defined data types. Okay. Generally in C language we are using primitive data types such as integer, unsigned integer, long integer, long unsigned, float, double, long double character. Okay. And here along with this data types, along with these data types in C++ one more, one more new primitive data type is added that is nothing but boolean data type or boolean data type. Okay. In C++ the new primitive data type is boolean data type. Now, under primitive generally we are giving integers float character and we are having several subtypes also. Okay, just before I said unsigned integer, next long integer, unsigned long integer and in float we are having double long double okay, like this and along with these data types we are having one more new data type called boolean and here generally boolean data type is used for to store the true or false. Okay. Generally boolean data type is used to store the true or false and it is going to occupy or it takes a 1 byte memory. Okay. Here boolean data type takes 1 byte memory and it is the new concept introduced in primitive data type. Next under derived data types, under derived data type we are having as usual array pointer and function. Under derived data type we are discussing arrays, pointers, functions in C language and here one more new addition okay, that is nothing but a reference data type. It is the new derived data type introduced in C++. Next user defined data types. Generally in C language we are using different types of user defined data types. Now user defined data types. Under user defined data type generally we are using structure union and enum or enum. Okay. These are the common data types available in C and in C++ along with this they have introduced one more concept called class. Now it is the new data type introduced in user defined category. Okay. That is why here primitive is having one addition derived is having one addition okay it is boolean is the new uh, concept and reference is the new concept under user defined the new concept is class like this the data, type, data types are discovered in c++ now what are the operators generally in c language okay we are using different kinds of operators based on number of operands uh, basically we are having three types unary binary ternary. Here, here also in C++ we are using unary operator, binary operator, ternary operator along with this means it is based on what number of operands. Next based on operation we are having several data type, several operators in C++ arithmetic operators, assignment operators, relational operators, logical operators, combined means combined assignment operators next increment decrement bitwise operators along with this in c++ they have introduced some new operators now i am going to list out okay now what are the new operators introduced in c++ now first uh, the new operator is nothing but uh, new generally in c language generally in c language we are using mlloc calloc realloc functions for dynamic 
memory allocation obviously. Instead of those functions here they have introduced one new operator called new for dynamic memory allocation. Next here in C language we are using free function to erase the memory dynamically created memory. Now in C++ instead of free function they have to given delete operator okay, which is called dynamic memory deallocation. Okay. Now it is used to clear the memory reserved by a new operator that is why new and delete operators belongs to dynamic memory segment. Next now the next one is endl actually we have discussed in manipulator which is equivalent to slash n. Generally in C language we are using slash n. Slash n means what? New line operator. Now it to slash n equivalent they have introduced a endl operator. Endl causes what? Next line. Okay. Next end s. Okay. Ending space. Okay. Here end s stands for ending space. It is going to add a space at the end of the line. Next the most important new operator the most important new operator in C++ is scope operator. Okay. Here the new operator very important operator introduced okay, very very important operator introduced in C++ is scope operator which is also familiar with the scope resolution operator colon colon is also called scope resolution operator which is used for specifying the relationship. Okay. It is used to specify the relationship with the class or object what it may be and it is also called global variable access operator global operator. Okay. It is also used to access the global variables. Okay. Later we will discuss what it is global next. Now star dot generally star means what? pointer dot means member that is why pointer to member access operator pointer to member access operator star dot we are using and it is called what pointer to member access operator. Next same thing star colon colon just before we have discussed colon colon is called scope operator generally scope is used for member accessing that is why it is also called pointer to member access operator pointer to member access operator and these are the operators newly introduced in C++. Remaining all operators are working with similar to the C language that is why the new operators added in C++ are new delete endl and s scope operator and pointer to member access operator and this one. Okay. Now, these are the new inventions in a C++. Now, okay, now I am going to give you the programming structure of C++ that means how to write a program in C++ what is the structure we have to follow. Generally C++ not only C++ for any language for any language we should have to follow certain structure and what is the structure of C++ program. Now the first structure part is that is documentation section generally every C++ program contains documentation section and generally it is represented with uh, square brackets. Generally square bracket represents what optional part. Now first of all what is called documentation section. Generally in documentation section we are going to write comments. Now generally program headings okay. every program generally needs heading and references definitions all they are placed inside the comments. Now first of all what is called comment. Okay. For example, here I am going to write a small c program hash include some stdio.h later void main later something is going to write. Now these are the st statements. Now the point is just assume it is a small c program and uh, now the output of this program nobody can expect. Why? Because it is not proper programming. Now watch it I am going to give like this for example finding prime number. Now everybody can understand this program is intended for finding the prime number and here actually this statement 
is not for the system, it is for user understandability and it should not be going to be participate in program execution. Here the point, it is not going to be participate in program execution. That is why what I have conducted is, I am going to place in between the slash star and star slash and now this line is called comment, this line is called what? Comment. That is why comments are only for user purpose, not for the system purpose. Now, they should not be participate in program execution. That is why you should have to enclose within a slash star star slash. Now, your compiler understands it is a comment and it is not going to be participate in program execution. And here the important thing is actually it is called a comment to block because of by using this one we can make any number of lines as comments like this. Now, all these lines will become comments, all these lines will become comments. That is why it is called comment to block and in C++ we are able to use comment block along with this uh, we are able to use this one also forward slash forward slash which is called single line comment. Okay? In C++ we can use uh, forward slash forward slash which is called what? Single line comment. Now, your compiler understand this line is a comment which is not going to be participate in program execution. Now, we are having two types of comments in C++. One is comment to block, another one is single line comment and uh, all these comments are generally placed in documentation section and it is purely optional. Now, generally C++ program contains first line documentation section. Next, okay. now it is nothing but the documentation section. Next, generally it is having header file part, global variables part and main part and function declarations, function definitions, everything. We should have to follow the programming structure. That means, every programming, every programming language is having a particular structure and we should have to follow this structure. Now, the first part of programming structure generally contains documentation. Next, generally it contains header files. Next one, global variables. Next, function declarations, which are also called prototyping and definitions. Next, main part, void main or int main. Now, other programming part. Okay. Generally, every C program or C++ program is divided into like this and uh, here just it is resembling to the C programming structure. Now, what is the new concept implemented in C++ is that is nothing but uh, class declarations and definitions. Actually, it is nothing but uh, C programming structure. Now, what is the new concept in C++ means that is nothing but uh, class declarations and definitions. Okay. Now, these are the two concepts newly introduced in C++. In C programming structure, we are not having any class concept. That is why now they are not available in C, but they are available in C++. Remaining thing everything is same to same. Now, function declarations and definitions and main part. And here the point is documentation section is completely optional but header file mandatory. Next, global variables once again optional part, class declarations and definitions also optional and function declaration definition and main is mandatory. Now, it is nothing but the programming structure of a C++. In next session, we are going to discuss some more thing. Okay. Thank you for watching. Thank you.